How's it going everyone? In today's video, I wanted to go over six WordPress development plugins that I use on just about every WordPress project that I work on. Now, this is a little bit different than the video I did a couple weeks ago about WordPress development desktop apps. So these are gonna be very development centric and not typically things you're gonna be showing off to your client, but something that's gonna help you out quite a bit. Um, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bells to make sure that you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show off the six plugins that I'm gonna talk about, and then I'm gonna walk through each plugin to tell you a little bit more about it, why I use it, and you know, just some features here and there that I think are helpful. So if you are in a TLDW, too long, didn't watch mood, um, here are all of the plugins that I'm gonna be showing off, and there are going to be links to each one in the description, so. There you go, and you're welcome. So for those who wanna stick around and hear a little bit about it, let's jump over to the first one. This is Advanced Custom Fields. If you've watched my channel for more than a day, you know that I love Advanced Custom Fields. And the real power comes in the pro version. So if you've got 100 bucks for a developer license, you get unlimited access to all the features, but you're getting you know, the repeater field, the clone field, all sorts of fun things that are going to make your development life easier. This is really easily accessible data that makes your templating life a lot easier as well as your data gathering life a lot easier. So it works with a lot of things. So if you're making your site uh, just a regular WordPress site or if you need to uh, hook it up to the REST API or GraphQL or something like that, ACF is, gonna work here, is where you're gonna wanna store all your data. So the next one is kind of a newer one. Uh, the guys at Hook Turn reached out to me and gave me their plugins to play with. The first one that I played with looked really interesting. It's called ACF Theme Code. Now this is a plugin that allows you to use advanced custom fields. Um, and as you're creating those fields, it will output what you see here on the screen. It'll output all of those different uh, groups, field groups into PHP down here for you. So you, actually can't do stuff like repeaters and stuff like that with the free fields but once you do the pro version you get some of the extra fields that actually make it worth it the free version is just okay i mean if you can kind of see a little bit right here like if you're just doing a single text field called subheading that you know you can write that out and you can have code snippets for that so it's not a big deal however when you're getting into these gigantic you know flexible content fields and then repeaters inside of it, that can be kind of a headache. So that's really where the plugin becomes worth it. I've used it a little bit and I actually really like it. So, you know, if you want to use it, I would highly recommend the pro version. The next one that I want to take a look at here is duplicate post and duplicate post is something that I actually find that I use way more often than I originally thought. So it's just kind of part of the starter plugins that I always install on my sites. But I mean, if I go over here and have it installed, once you have a, a post up here and you need to quickly duplicate it, you just hover over it and you just click clone and it will create a new draft of that post for you. So there's a lot of use cases for this, especially when you want to keep a clone or um, a duplicate of a post, make some changes to this, uh, the original. And then if you mess up, you can just delete that one and just reinstantiate the clone. So it's uh, pretty nice that way. And there's a thousand use cases for it, but I always have it on hand and, and it always seems to come into use somewhere. The next one that I wanna take a look at is EWWW. That is an image optimizer plugin that is really nice. I kind of used to use Smush a lot, um, but I've just found that this one's a little bit easier. You upload uh, images to your media library and this one will compress the images to make sure that they are not uh, any sort of more pixelated or anything like that, but they are reduced file sizes, so it's lossless compression. There is a pro version that makes it so it compresses it even further, just like pretty much every image optimizer plugin that I found. So they're uh, all pretty much the same really, but I've just found that EWW is a little bit better. So if you have any other recommendations on an Im image optimizer plugin, this is the one where I feel like I need the most help. So leave a comment below to let me know if you've got one that you really like. Now, the next one is Query Monitor. If you watched my 
a WordPress speed optimization tutorial. This was featured in there, but this is a dev tools um, panel for WordPress, just like it says up here. So this pops up a window that looks a little bit like this on your site, which actually, let me just show you. I'm going to visit my site here and you get this guy. So you can click on this up here and it gives you all the different things that are going on in your site. And you can kind of poke around here and see what is taking so long. So sometimes you'll have, you know, API calls, HTTP API calls, which there are none here, but you could have some that are slowing down your site. It tells you what kind of styles are being used and where you could um, clean up some of those assets and things like that. So it's a really powerful tool. And then I always kind of keep it um, activated just, and it only happens on the, when you're logged in. So don't worry about it taking up time for your users. But if you have it installed while you're logged in, you'll get that bar and you can kind of poke around. But I always keep it around because eventually if things start to get too slow, it'll turn red and you can kind of um, see what's been going on and what are the changes that you're making and, and how they're impacting your site. So it's always kind of nice to have that little bit of a gut check um, up there at the top so you make sure that you're not ruining your site with all the fun things that you're doing on it. So the last plugin that I want to go over is one that is pretty much on every site that has WordPress. So it is Yoast SEO. This is one that everybody's got their opinion on which SEO plugin is the best. I don't know. This one's kind of like vanilla ice cream for me. It's just, I like it. It's simple. It works. It does all the things that I need it to do. And so there it is. It's always on my site. So it, I do think it has a leg up just because it is so popular. It does everything that you would want, but because it's popular, when you work with an SEO expert or if you're in a company that you know people have used WordPress before, likely they've used Yoast SEO before and it's easy to pick up. There's really nothing to explain. So I really like it. So I hope that you guys found this tutorial helpful. Uh, Obviously, there are a lot of plugins out there that people use on a regular basis. These are just, you know, a few of mine that I use. So if you have plugins that you like to use, please leave a comment below and let me know what they are. I'm always looking to expand my arsenal a little bit. And so remember, if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new here. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.